Okay. Hi, Emily. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So I guess we're going to be talking about grief today, huh? Yes. Is that a <laughs> <laughs> you say that so positively. Most people don't want to talk about grief, I think. I, that's why I talk about it, because I want people to know that they can grieve and be happy at the same time. Well, now there's an interesting concept. OK, so how can I be happy and grieve at the same time? Well, usually you when you're grieving somebody or something, because it can be a loss of, of something as well as a loss of a person. If you're grieving them, you probably really love them and that they have a real special place in your heart. And recalling that love and how wonderful it was should make you smile. Because it, uh, it, if you, for instance, if um, a loved one of mine were to die, I would not want to think about them sitting around and being sad forever. My, my mom and my sister both did that after my, their husbands died. They, they just, uh, my sister got better at smiling after a while, but mom really didn't smile anymore after dad died. And, and I thought that was really sad. So I, I know daddy would have wanted her to enjoy the rest of her life. Well, that's true. Although I think there is a period, if somebody stays in the grieving mode for too long, it's certainly no good. One, one has to get on with their life. But uh, you don't think that there is a period where it's sort of acceptable to be? Oh, absolutely. There is a period for a while that um, it's not that you're not happy. It's that you're kind of um, in a fog, probably. I would be describe it that way, that you just not, or at least with me, I wasn't really recognizing what was going on around me. And I was sad. And at the same time, when I would think back to happy memories that we had, I still could smile about that. Not right at the beginning, because everything was kind of um, one dimensional at, at the beginning after a deep loss. Um, and that that can last a long time. I've talked to people that their three years passed when their loved one died and they still feel that way. And those those people I would get concerned about. But it's perfectly normal for the first month or two to be kind of uh, kind of void of emotions or crying a lot, and and that's that's perfectly fine. But the further away you get from the event that caused the grief, the more you start to move forward. And I don't say get over your grief because a lot of times people do that. I've, I've heard people say that their bosses after they had a two day bereavement leave to go to the funeral, they come back and, and they're kind of um, sad and a little teary and the boss says, Are you, aren't you over that yet? <laughs> people who haven't had uh, to deal with grief yet, they will, but if they haven't yet, it's sometimes kind of hard for them to understand. They think you can just turn it on and off and it doesn't work that way. No, it also depends too on the situation and the circumstance. I mean, if you lose your grandmother who was 90 years old and had a good long life and she died in her sleep, that's less of a traumatic event than if you lose a child. Absolutely. Um, the other one, a friend of mine actually started a, a support group and I think there's other support groups for this, but she lost her dog and she said mm -hmm. that, that there was very little support for her after losing her dog that she had for, you know, 15 years and she lived alone. She was single and they wouldn't even give her time off for work. In fact, she lost her job because she took wow. time off to grieve for her dog, right? People just did not accept it. And I thought that was that's, bad. I thought that was yeah, terrible. Yeah, that's, that's very sad. Yeah. Because uh, dogs are sometimes the person's only or best friend. Sure. Not just dogs, cats mm. too. They're, they're animals. They become very, very close to. I have a friend who's so close to her bird. I don't know what would happen to her if her bird wasn't there to talk to her. So it's it's perfectly normal to to grieve over um, 
an animal that you love just as you would a person. Yeah, I mean, there's all the support in the world if you lose a human being. But there seems to be very little support for people if they lose their their dogs or their cats. And it's too bad because I know I'm very attached to mine. I have two dogs and uh, I think I would have a harder time with grief if I lost one of them than uh, probably my mother. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't want to well, tell it, her it's that. It's all different but... perspective. You know, <laughs> yeah. I do understand. I know you, yeah. you feel kind of guilty when you say something like that, but it, it's uh, it, that's to totally normal. I have a, a friend. Mm, he must be mid sixties now, whose dog died a, a couple of weeks ago, and he just can barely even talk still because they were so close. They did everything together. They went everywhere together. And I've been trying to give him some emotional support because he's he's kind of broken right now. And I have confidence that ultimately he's going to feel better. But right now, it's just what he has to go through. And it's it's more traumatic to him. I, I knew him when his dad died and he wasn't like this. So you, you can be closer to your animals than you are to humans. And some places like um, there's a church in Los Angeles, the Agape International Spiritual Center, they have a, a bereavement group for people. And at the same time as that meeting, they have a gre sorry, bereavement group for pets. Oh, that's nice. And that's they're great. very supportive there. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's a different sort of relationship because the relationship that people humans have with dogs is a far it's it's more uh, on the emotional level your connection to the dog is is almost purely emotional where mm -hmm. your connection to other human beings is emotional but it's also greatly and heavily relied uh, on communication verbal communication yes okay you can love somebody and get into a big fight with them verbally over whatever. We've all done that with our spouse and with our parents probably. But with a dog, it's just a purely emotional level because there's limited verbal communication. They understand some commands and but what they pick up on is your routine. They know exactly when you're going to go here, what you're going to do. They pick up on all of that that sometimes people don't even pick up on who you've lived with for your whole life. So there's a whole different connection. So when you lose them, all of that is lost. And it's, I don't know, it's difficult. It's very hard to get through that. And animals uh, tend to love you, dogs especially, love you unconditionally. Unconditionally, yes. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't matter, you know, if, if you're grumpy or if, if you say something negative, they're still going to come up and lick your toes and climb up <laughs> in your lap or the only do time, something to make you feel better. Right. The only time dogs will turn is if you're mean to them, if you abuse That's them. That's right. As long as you feed them and you love them, they will be there for you forever. And, yes. you know, some breeds will lay down their life for you if you get into dangerous situations. Um, OK, let's talk a little bit about your book. Your book is called Loving and Living Your Way Through Grief. Uh, have we basically covered the concept of the book or is there something we haven't talked about yet? Well, kind of with, with the book, um, I wrote this after I had written a series of cards to a friend after her husband died. Uh, he died suddenly and young and I knew that she hadn't thought about the possibility of him dying even and I felt like she really needed some support. And since I live in Hawaii and she lived on the mainland, I wasn't there to like hold her hand. So I wrote her cards every week for the first year. And I realized with what I was writing in those cards that I had an outline for a book. And each of the chapters in the book covers a, a different subject that you can, can deal with things like um, gratitude or self-love or um, forgiveness or integrity. Each, each one is kind of different. And at the end, and it's, it's not a memoir of me. A lot of times when people write 
grief books. It's a it's a memoir, and it certainly has my experiences in it. But I also interviewed a bunch of other people and includes their experiences too. And at the end of every chapter, I give the reader something active to do. Because I think that's that's what people really need. You know, you, when when you read something. The words can kind of bounce around in your head and you may or may not remember them. But if you've got something active to do, then that helps. And a lot of the things uh, have to do with writing because I'm, I'm a writer. I taught writing for 30 years at the university and, and I love to write. I've written college textbooks on, on writing before. So when I was dealing with grief, both times when both husbands died, I wrote a lot. And that really helped me a lot. And I saw different things that I wrote that helped me more than others. And I thought, you know what? This is helping me so much. I bet I could help other people. So I started uh, helping people here on Maui. We would meet. First, we were meeting once a month. And we'd write and then share our writing and talk about it. And they said they were getting so much out of it, they wanted to come more often. So we were meeting up until the pandemic uh, shutdown started. We were meeting every other week and writing together through grief. And now I'll do that on Zoom because the process of writing really helps people a lot. I, I just got a lovely email from one of the people in my writing class that it was so grateful for introducing her to this, uh, something she hadn't thought of to deal with her grief before. And she said it's just been powerful and invaluable to her. And she she was really grateful, and she's doing it. You know, I, I give her suggestions, but she's she's got a she has tools to help her deal with her grief by using the information that that I give in the classes, which is similar to the the suggestions, the practices at the end of the chapters that I give to the reader. We've got just a couple of minutes left, but I wanted to ask you, uh, what exactly do you recommend people r actually write? Do they write about their, is it like a diary type writing? If no, someone does? Uh, it's, I'm, I encourage people to write um, like journal writings every day. But every time I, I meet with them or talk to them, I give them something different to do, something different to consider and, and write about that. And like uh, the, the group that met online on Saturday, I was asking them to write about what they learned from their grief for one person. And they were a little bit surprised when I said for one person, and then they realized that they all were dealing with grief for different people. It wasn't just uh, one person that they had. One, one person had several friends who died. And she's, when we, we talk in the group, it'll be about a different one every time we, it depends on what the subject is. So I said, just pick one and tell me what you learned from that grief, or not tell me, write what you learned from that grief. And they, they just, they love that. And they, there's different, every time I, I give them a, a subject, it's going to be different. So it gives them things to think about. One, one of their favorite things to do is to write gratitude lists. When, when we learn really about how to write gratitude lists in a way that serves them and they, they get kind of hooked on it and really like that. So in addition to any of the other writing they're doing, they're writing that down too. Well, we do have to wind this down. Do you have a website that you want to give out for your book or a personal website? Yes, I do. It's the same name as the book, Loving and Living Your Way Through Grief com. Books available any place books are sold, and you can contact me. Um, there's a contact on my website, or my email is emily at lovingandlivingyourwaythroughgrief.com. So I'm easy to get a hold of. You can read more about me, sign up for my blog on the, the um, website, and I would be happy to be in touch with you. Great. How's, how long has the book been out? It came out in January. And how's it doing? It's doing very well. It uh, has already won won a board won award for the uh, top grief groups in twenty twenty one. Oh, that's already. fantastic! Oh, congratulations so, on that. Thank you thank so much. You. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you and nice talking to you. And uh, best of luck.